Okay, so next we have the song, Fox in the Hen House, I call it. Fox went out on a stormy night, prayed for the moon to give him light. It had many miles to go that night before he reached the town. Oh, that's that song. It's about a fox that goes out to a hen house and gets a chicken. I have raw chicken. There's a small mountain lion hanging around the home on Redmond Road. I throw out raw chicken for it. It's looking at the chicken. Maybe I shouldn't have done this so near the home. Brooke and I live here. Sense of mountain lion eating cooked or raw chicken. Sense of a possible link to Heidi Thompson. Sense of the tree with the hawks nesting in it when Brooke was born. This, this is a redwood tree that was near our home that had some hawks nesting. Um, at least in the springtime. I don't know. She was born in December. It seems like the hawks nest, nested there maybe in the earlier in the spring. I'm not sure. Or maybe it was the following year. Idea of antlers and um, what I call Seth Brunel's meat tree. Uh, idea of wild animals, predators, and prey. I see shapes behind eyelids. Is the coral shape linked to the brain? Like brain coral, folded shapes, cauliflower. Like this is before I saw the article with the girl in the cake. And I felt like after that, I felt like it was related to the cake. But it could also be these other things as well. Um, because I think what's kind of being hinted at, alluded to here, is this idea of children being manipulated, their brains being manipulated remotely in ways that I described. Um, and so, like, uh, one question I have about Seth, <laughs> Seth Brunel, who was a um, biology student. He was one of Dr. Hurley's students. So I had a dream of him and Dr. Hurley in 1986, you know, and these avocado trees, right? And I know that Dr. Hurley studied reproductive glands on long-legged flies or something like that. And I think that's what Kurt Cobain was alluding to in the song In, in Bloom. Ah, yeah. So I think we're, we're getting links here. So the rainbow cake is also linked to the song in bloom because there's the, there are rainbow flowers on that cake. So when, um, Kurt Cobain sang about, um, reproductive glands, he used that word in the song in bloom. And if you look at, there's two different videos for in bloom. And one of the videos has a lot of hints about stuff like that. One of the videos, would be another whole thing I could do is that video to that song because a lot of it alludes to me as a child different things including you know um things that I remember from my preschool so both of my preschools Moore Avenue preschool in Eureka and kids place in Arcata I would go a couple days a week to one and a couple days a week to the other preschool my dad was teaching in Arcata and we were living in Eureka near Moore Avenue and it looks like both of those preschools had hidden cameras in them. So I think what we're getting to here is this idea of young girls being prey. And children being prey as, you know, and, and these predators being around. So I had this dream of Seth from 1986 and I realized later on, much, much, much later on that this dream, this dreamscape in this dream was actually based on Chris's album cover for the Wipers Land of the Last Lost album from nine the album came out in 86 he he made the drawing for it in 85 i think that's how it went the dream that i had was from 86 or 87 um and so it was as if the dream was based on that album cover and in that dream we had uh, there we they we were getting avocados from avocado trees my best guess of the meaning of avocado is it's something like a you know female genitalia or something like that that's the meaning of it and it might also be linked to avocado farming but 
years later, so this was in the 80s, years later, Seth actually moved to a home. He rented a home just a stone's throw from our home, like across the street practically from where I grew up and where I was living at the time. So this is in, say, 1990, 91. I was staying at my parents' house. My mom was off going to college in Minnesota. So I was taking care of their animals in their home and going to school at Humboldt State. And Seth, presumably, was also going to school at Humboldt State and lived in a home, you know, just a few feet away. And I visited him one time at this place. And he was doing this thing where he would put meat scraps into a... It wasn't really a tree, I don't think. I think it was a stump in front of his house. It might have been a tree. For raccoons and stuff to get... So, you know, he was interested in wild animals. And um, so he put out meat for them. And bones and things like that. Then... This is when I was walking my dog around all the time. So in 1991, in June of 91, that's when I had this dream about this mountain lion. And then late June 91, there started to be mountain lion attacks. Now the thing about this tree with the hawks nesting in it, um, I wasn't going to say this, but since since it's in with this context, I will say it, that... Um, I think at the time I understood that there was a tradition having to do with putting the end of a, the umbilical, the baby's umbilical cord into a strong tree, um, you know, in hopes it would help the baby grow up to be strong. And so I put um, the end of the umbilical cord into this tree where the hawks were nesting, this redwood tree. So what's what's going on here is there's links being made between young girls and meat that's what's going on here and so i think what this dream might be saying something specifically about this girl with the rainbow cake that this isn't just a general thing but that this girl is actually being trafficked so i think my dream is saying that this girl is being trafficked and that maybe some of the harassment she's experiencing, because this to me is harassment to be, you know, punished for this. Maybe some of this harassment is basically this weird kind of targeting that happens to these girls when they're being trafficked, as if they're being blamed for the way that they're being exploited. I had questioned, as far as Seth goes, I had questioned whether Seth was putting meat in that tree to attract mountain lions on purpose because, I mean, it's hard to know what the heck is going on when, when all this stuff is going on. I don't know whether that's true or not. In a sense of a link to Heidi Thompson, but her family, my understanding was that their family is one of the um, families that lost an animal to this one of these mountain lions. So she lived right down the street from me. Seth was kind of across the street. She wasn't there at the time. She was married, I think, and living in Eureka. or maybe She might have even been actually living in Utah at that time, but her family was living there. And my understanding is they lost a rabbit or a goat to one of these mountain lions. And this makes me wonder if the Fox in the Hen House song was actually about this. I mean, this might be something that's so old that this there's a hidden meaning in this song. Um, and another thing to mention also is that, you know, it's becoming more and more clear that the mountain lions that were um, creating problems were linked to the Lawler family, at least back then. The mammalogist Timothy Lawler from Humboldt State, who was also ran the preschool that I went to in Arcata. So that's another link to the mountain lion and children, preschools and things like that. <laughs>